What's good, Niner fam? My name is JT Magnum. Welcome back to Niner News. This is the last segment in my draft needs for the for the San Francisco 49ers for the NFL draft coming up. Um, and this is the cornerbacks. This is the, the reason why I chose them last is because I don't really feel the Niners need a cornerback. Um, if they do, one is all they need. I, I think the Niners are fine with the cornerbacks they have. There are a couple guys I would like to get rid of here and there, but and if the 49ers drafted somebody really good, then I would get rid of them maybe or trade them or find a way to you know to move them somewhere. But Tremaine Brock, he's been injured the last couple years and not, you know, but he's been a solid cornerback for the 49ers for a few years. Um, can he get back to a really good form? I don't know. But I think the 49ers have some really promising corners. And Dante Johnson, Jimmy Ward, who's moved from safety to corner, can play both. Uh, Kenneth Acker and Keith Reeser. I think the 49ers can do very well with those cornerbacks. Um, if they draft the corner, these are the guys I like. And they're pretty much late, later round picks. I didn't pick anybody in the first round. I don't think the 49ers are going to draft the cornerback in the first round anyway. So... So I'm not picking a Jalen Ramsey, I'm not picking like the, the corners like that. I'm going for second and second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round kind of picks. So with the guy that I think that's going to go in the second round, that's Artie Burns. And that's the guy that I am extremely interested in. Uh, was a track star at Miami from the U. You know those good corners. A lot of those good corners come from Miami. Um, <clears throat> he's a speed demon. Can pretty much stay with any wide receiver. He ran a 4.46. Um, that's not so fast if you think about it, but it's fast enough to stay with a lot of receivers. Um, great size and height at six foot, 193 pounds. Uh, breaks on the ball extremely well. Baits quarterbacks. He's one of those baiters. Uh, you got to be careful with those because sometimes they bait and take risk and they can get burnt. And that's what happened to him a little bit here and there. But you like aggressive play. You want aggressive play, especially, like I said, in the NFC West, you got to have aggressive play. And he's one of those guys that had some problem with defensive pass interferences and things like that in the past, but he stays with wide receivers. Is pretty much a blanket on wide receivers, and you want that. You can coach the the defensive pass interferences, and you can coach some of that out of him. You can get you know you can you can stop him from doing too much baiting and being able to, and getting beat like that with some coaching. So I think he's a guy the Forty Nine should look at maybe in the second round. Here's a guy that I really like as well, uh, DeAndre Hall. Hopefully I said his name right. Um, fifth to seventh round, probably out of Northern Iowa, 6'2", 200 pounds, and you're gonna you're gonna see a theme for me today: big corners. The reason why I like big corners, you had those running backs in the NFC West, and you had those tall wide receivers in the NFC West that you need to cover, and they can win jump balls and things like that. So you want big big corners to cover those dudes, and you want big aggressive strong corners to cover those running backs and to be able to tackle those running backs that are coming out of the backfield david johnson todd Gurley, um rawls from 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 uh seattle you want you want a big corner to be able to get after those dudes uh here's a guy that can play cornerback and safety deandre hall um excellent height at 6'2 um highly intelligent apparently he's got long arms so he's got like a really really crazy long wingspan and that will help you. When you're 6'2", when you got a long wingspan, that helps you for jump balls. You can get your hand on the ball, you know, disrupt the plays, disrupt fade routes and things like that. Um, they said he's still raw at the position, but he has a crazy willingness to learn and loves to be coached. So that's a good thing. You want players like that that's eager to learn, that's eager and highly intelligent, will study wide receivers and study their game and be able to get after it. Didn't run a fast 40, 4, 6, 8, but neither did Josh Norman. He just got a huge contract and he's on wide receivers like glue. So you never know with those kind of with that with cornerbacks and with that and with that and with their technique and the way they play. So um we'll see what happens with that guy. But he's a guy, he's one of my favorites uh, for a late, late round pick at corner. Uh Xavier Howard, uh third, another third and fourth round probably pick out of Baylor. 6'2, 200 pounds. Like I said, big corner. Ran a 458, extremely fast. Tall, fast, excellent press corner. Uh, uses his size to his advantage. Tracks the ball well. Um, has explosive has explosiveness to the ball to tackle. In other words, somebody's running around the corner or somebody's you know running. He can pretty much dart off that uh, off that outside line of scrimmage and just tackles you know a, a running back with ease, especially given his size. Um, great straight line speed. The only thing about him that they say is sometimes he gets turned around. Obviously, that happens to a lot of corners. Depends on what kind of wide receivers run the routes and who's running the routes. Um, they say you know, he gets turned around too much out of his back pedal. And he lacks consistency when jamming. Um, but that's stuff that can be taught. 
I mean, and you get experience in the NFL, you get taught, you get coached up. You know, those are things that can be corrected. And like I said, I like his size, I like his height, and I like his I like his ability to be able to tackle. You want these kind of guys that can, that can tackle, period. Next guy is Sean Davis. Now, this guy, mm, I'm a little iffy about. Um, he's 6'1", 201 pounds, another big dude. But the thing I do love about him, he's an extremely hard hitter. Like, I'm talking like a laser missile, guided, laser guided missile of a hitter. The guy can just lay a pop on you. He makes, he strikes fear into people that catch the ball. If you catch the ball in front of him, he's probably going to lay you out. He's that kind of guy. Um, I love Mike Rump. I don't know if you remember him, but before I had Mike Rump, he got beat a lot, but he was an extremely hard hitter. He was one of those kind of guys. Uh, a, like a Nate Clements can hit too as well. A good tackler. Um, tackling machine. That's what. That's pretty much what he is. Flies to the ball. He can speak three languages. I don't know if that what that relates to anything. I guess that means he's highly intelligent. But he speaks English, French, and Chinese. And if you speak Chinese, I'm sorry, but you're pretty intelligent to me because that is a very hard language to speak. I don't know what part of Chinese he speaks, uh, but I know there's like different, obviously, like with Spanish, there's different kind of Spanish, there's different kind of things like that. But there's there's different kind of uh, languages in Chinese. I don't know what he speaks, but man, that's got to be pretty intelligent to speak that. Anyways, um, has been burnt a lot. He struggles a little bit in coverage. And but that's something like I said with coaching can be dangerous with you know with with the right coaching with the right experience he can be dangerous in the backfield like I said he is one of those just feared like a guy that if he lays a smackdown on you you're gonna think about twice about catching the ball and that's that you kind of want that you want that intimidating factor in your backfield as a cornerback so and the last guy I talk about James Bradbury probably gonna go in the fourth round or fourth or fifth or maybe early fifth. Out of Samford, 6'1", 211 pounds, runs a 4'5'0", another athletic freak basically, well built, um, excellent zone coverage. This is a guy that can play zone very well. His man skills aren't the best, um, they're pretty decent, but um, and he shows good jamming technique, good size and height. And like I said, another one that another one that can get up in the air and, and you know, deflect balls and things like that, especially on jump balls. Has great instinct on tackles um, against the run. And I think at a fourth or fifth round spot, he's going to be a great pickup for any team. I mean, if you think about it, and especially with his speed, he's got pretty good, pretty good speed for his size. You know, to, he's carrying 200, what, 211 pounds and he's 6'1". Um, so he can pretty much, you know, lay the smack down on you as well if, you know, if he gets a good run at you. And so those are the kind of guys, like I said, I like. I like tall corners. Um, I'm hoping the 49ers can build on those kind of corners. So we'll see what happens. But... Let me know in the comment section what you think, what cornerbacks you like in the draft. Uh, I don't think the 49ers need a safety. I'm not even going to talk about safeties. They have enough safeties on this team. We don't need any more safeties. But um, I do like those hybrid players that can play safety and corner because that way you, they're interchangeable. They're guys that if a safety does get hurt, you can plug in one of those cornerbacks that can switch to safety at any time. So I kind of like interchangeable players like that. But let me know in the comment section what you think about the guys I picked. Let me know who you like in the draft for the Flyers and where you you might want to draft the cornerback. And and like I said, don't forget to leave a like on the video. And that does it for all the draft needs of the of the Flyers. If you feel like I missed out on some draft needs or you think there's another need or draft need, maybe you can let me know in the comment section. Other than that, we'll see what happens in the draft. All right. So for JT Magnum Niner News, I'm out. Peace, y'all.